It is a great pleasure to introduce President Pedro Sanchez, who is coming to Davos freshly confirmed by the Spanish Parliament after winning two elections in a row. The President just appointed his cabinet the first coalition government in the recent democratic history of the country. Spanish economy is strong. Growth is above the EU average. Jobs are being created. Exports are robust. Yet structural reforms cannot wait any longer. So reforms, reforms, reforms. The path will not be easy, but I'm sure that under your renewed leadership, Spain will successfully weather the current global slowdown and transform its productive model, making it more inclusive and sustainable. Internationally, President Sanchez has also emerged as one of the great champions of multilateralism. This is encouraging at a moment when precisely we need true internationalist leaders more than ever. We saw that very recently, when Spain came to the rescue and offered to host the COP25 in Madrid, or organized it in just three weeks, they, they organized this major conference with tens of thousands of participants, which normally takes years to plan. This highlighted Spain's unmitigated commitment towards the fight against climate change. And President Sanchez is also a leader in the promotion of gender equality and the activism of his government in this area is a shining example for many other countries worldwide. And uh, let me share with you that President Sanchez's commitment to multilateralism is also felt and benefiting the OECD. Actually, Spain will be chairing our ministerial council meeting this year uh, at the end of May. And this will be an instrumental meeting as we rethink our model of progress. At a time when inequalities, environmental degradation, and citizens' discontent invite us to pause and think on the future we want, I'm glad that Spain has put the focus on our ministerial and how we can bring about a new inclusive and sustainable growth model, a model that accounts for the extraordinary technological and demographic transformations that are taking place. A model that measures progress for what it should really be, better lives for our citizens without leaving anyone behind. Mr. President, the floor is yours. Good morning. Thank you very much, Angel, for your kind words. Uh, Spain uh, is today seen by the world as a stable democracy that seeks uh, to strengthen its values by developing citizens' rights, combating inequality, and committing to social justice and equality between men and women. So in the face of nationalist uh, regression in every sphere, my government is firmly committed to effective and inclusive multilateralism as the only solution to address the major global challenges of our times. Spain, as you know, is a Southern European country. It uh, has fraternal ties with the Latin American countries due to, uh, to history and language. It is a neighbor of Africa. It shares uh, age-old friendship with the people of the Middle East. And it has an ever greater aspiration to strengthen uh, its ties to Asia, which has become the world's fulcrum in recent uh, decades. Spain is therefore an open country with a clear will to continue fighting for a more open and cohesive world, a world that finds its inspirations in the Agenda 2030, an agenda that contains, in my opinion, all the policy lessons we need for this decade. And precisely because Spain is a country that is open to the world, it is well aware that the challenges faced on every continent in this second decade of the 21st century are the same for all, with different degrees of intensity and urgency, but exactly the same. Just a few days ago, I present uh, the mandatory government program to the Spanish parliament in order to obtain its vote uh, of confidence. The program described the five challenges facing Spanish society and the five transformations necessary to overcome them. 
And please allow me to explain them here so that together we may see how this description of Spain is also the, a description of uh, the world as a whole. Firstly, the consolidation of economic growth that involves the creation of uh, decent jobs. Economic growth at any cost is not acceptable. Uh, growth that widens the social divide is uh, not acceptable. Growth that creates pockets of working poor is not acceptable. We need to grow and distribute at the same time, and we must therefore ask ourselves what we are doing to prepare for the major change in our job market. Spain uh, economy continues to grow at a faster pace than that of the Eurozone, as Angel has mentioned before. And, but we need to, to improve our competitiveness, productivity and cohesion to make that growth sustainable in the long term. And we will do so without uh, ever letting decent employment out of our sight. We do not want a future of precariousness or of uh, working poverty. The second challenge is uh, what I want to talk is uh, the digital transformation of our economies. Artificial intelligence, biotechnology and robotics are not mere links in the chain of ongoing economic change, but true levers for total transformation. In a decade, our production systems, our mobility, our cities, our health, and our everyday lives will be completely different to how uh, they are now. There will be new products, new markets, new ways of organizing our activity. So our goal is to make all of uh, that contribute to greater economy and social well-being for the majority of our citizens, and not to uh, the gradual gradual breakdown of our welfare state. Our society's human capital will be key to promoting and enabling technological change. Spain's uh, new government wishes to make education and research its center of gravity because they are the guarantee of a good future. We are going to commit to training at all levels, especially uh, vocational training, which needs a major boost in our country. By 2025, Spain will need to have created 200,000 new vocational training places and strengthened uh, teacher training and uh, the link between training and the productive sectors. The third challenge, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is the ecological transition. No other change or challenge, sorry, is better proof of the fact that the challenges we face in a country like Spain are actually the challenges facing all of us. An area in Australia that is bigger than the Netherlands and Belgium combined is in flames. Puerto Rico is being flooded by torrential uh, uh, rains. But here as well, very close to where we are now, glaciers are melting at the greatest speed. Swiss uh, glaciers have shrunk by 10% in this past, few, uh, this past five years. So the climate emergency is a disaster that knows no borders. And we are the last generation that will be able to address it effectively. According to the International Renewable Energy Ag Agency, the assembly of which will be chaired by Spain in 2021, the damage caused in 2018 by natural disasters increasingly linked to climate change amounted to $165 billion. In Spain, for the first time, the government has a vice president, not only one for digitalization, but other for the ecological transition, placing, therefore, climate action at the heart of the government's policy. Just yesterday, the cabinet approved a climate emergency declaration, and we are firmly committed to advancing towards a decarbonized energy model underpinned by renewable resources. And to achieve these goals, Spain has presented its strategic uh, framework for uh, energy and climate as a roadmap for reducing greenhouse emissions in the coming decade. Our aim for 2030 is to reduce our emissions by 20% compared with 1990, and our ultimate goal is to achieve climate neutrality by uh, 2050 with a 100 renewable electricity system. But in the same way that no economic growth can be good if it does not reduce inequalities, no ecological transition can be positive if it not, if it not just, if it leaves people behind. The government of Spain, and I'm very proud of this, has prepared a just transition strategy, the first of its 
kind in the world, in line with the European Union's Green New Deal, which seeks to protect the most vulnerable with respect to the necessary transformations. A strategy enabling all citizens to make the most of the job opportunities and improve competitiveness and social cohesion generated. No one must be left behind. But regarding the ecological transition and the consequent uh, change to the economy, I would like to highlight something important. It is within our reach to ensure that the impacts constitute a major leap forward. To make these change uh, opportunities for modernization, for useful investments and for job creation, to make them boost for the global economy. Spain's government is going to work towards that horizon. Spain's Integrate National Energy and Climate Plan uh, for 2021-2030, which was presented uh, by uh, the government to, to the European Union, received the highest assessment among all the member states. We are going to mobilize 236 billion euros in public and private uh, funding between 221 and 230, and we are going to create between 250,000 and 364,000 new jobs in a decade. The fourth challenge we are facing is uh, a real equality between women and men. As Angel has said, Spain is very committed with this uh, agenda. Half of the world's uh, population cannot continue suffering sexual aggression, employment discrimination, and lower income. But neither can the other half, the men, continue allowing the waste of women talents and the flagrant violation of the most uh, basic human rights. It is not fair. Moreover, it is not even efficient because greater participation of women in the economy would have positive effects on growth and as, as proven in many studies. Feminism is an, and shall continue to be one of the hallmarks of this Spanish government. And this is reflected in the gender balance, the composition of our cabinet, cabinet, in which three of the four vice presidents are women. And this hallmark of our identity will also be reflected in the development of public policies favoring equality, a law that ensures equal pay through paid transparency, equal paternity and maternity leave, uh, the organization of working hours, this is a big challenge in Spain, to enable the sharing of family care responsibilities and the unwearing fight against gender violence. The fifth and final challenge uh, we are facing is the, that of so social justice. We live in prosperous societies which nevertheless have alarming levels of poverty and social vulner vulnerability. Inequality, instead of declining, is becoming more acute. And therefore, I remember um, last year here in Davos, uh, the Dutch writer Roger Bregman said something very interesting. He said something like this. I hear people taking the language uh, uh, of participation and justice and equality and transparency, but then almost no one writes the real issue of tax avoidance. And this is true, in my opinion. We say little about taxes, about fiscal justice, and let us not fool ourselves. There can be no social justice without tax justice. But I believe that the time has come to go one step further. It is not enough to redistribute income through taxes. We must advance towards redistribution, towards ensuring uh, that the markets uh, function in a fairer and a more democratic manner. The empirical evidence is there, it's overwhelming and shows that efficiency and equity are directly uh, related, that growth and reasonable distribution are mutually compatible. Only growth that is inclusive and respectful of the planet can be sustainable. We all know our history. After the Second World War, Europe signed on to a pact that recognized the impossibility of achieving peaceful societies while large pockets of misery endured within them. I'm referring, of course, to the famous Social Democratic Pact, which laid the groundwork to, for, for the principal hallmark of the European Union, which is welfare state and social cohesion. The second stage was ushered in at uh, a, uh, the beginning of the 80s that led to deregulation and the excessive uh, financialization of the economy, which uh, created uh, in uh, the year 2008 the greatest economic uh, crisis since the Great Depression, whose aftershocks are still felt by our societies. 
The time, I believe, has come, therefore, to enter a new era that reinstates collective progress, social inclusion, and protection of the most vulnerable members of our societies um, as hallmarks of our identity. A new era that resolves the failures of neo neoliberalism through the solvency of social democracy. A new era that never again allows economic progress to be made at the cost of human beings. We have a long way to go, a long way to go. But there is, a, there is already a clear blueprint of what we must start doing. Discuss tax and taxes and tax havens and work openly towards fiscal justice. Establish a minimum living wage that ensures that all citizens can live free from poverty, focusing particularly on children. Establish a, so, a new social compact that balances the generation of in income and through redistribution, reduce the strain on the welfare state, the welfare state, thereby strengthening it, address the aging of our society and reform our public pension system to ensure decent pensions that are economically sustainable. The new government of Spain, and Angel uh, mentioned it before, uh, consists of a coalition between the Spanish Socialist Party and Unidas Podemos, a party to the left of the Socialist Party. It will, be no, not a, uh, it will not be a government that stands back and watch, but uh, one that is willing to act, not an in instrumentalized government, but one that is committed to society and to the future, a government, in short, that champions accountability. We also set out to show that the far right and also closer border nationalism can only be fought in one way, through politics or through the politics of the common goods providing a response to people's problems. Citizens will believe in democracy if democracy believes in them, in each and every one of them, if it strives to provide them with opportunities. Otherwise, our social market economy will not survive. Our model of freedoms will not survive. These five major challenges, which are Spain's uh, challenges, but are shared by all, will be addressed in a positive context of growth and job creation, albeit at lower rates than in recent years, with a Spanish economy that is clearly more robust and more balanced than in the past, an economy which continues to correct the bubbles and excesses of the past times, making it more resistant to internal and external shocks. And in this undertaking, we will at all times exercise fiscal rigor and sound management of our public accounts. This is why we maintain our commitment to reducing the deficit and public debt levels, which will undoubtedly generate greater confidence among economic agents and enable us to have a government with greater possibilities for action and future investment. The stronger, or the strong, sorry, performance of the Spanish economy generates trust as reflected in the relevant indicators. The risk premium, our low uh, public debt interest rates, the significant uh, upturn in investment and positive uh, foreign investment figures all make us optimistic about the future. Ladies and gentlemen, the Spanish government has a mandate for 1,400 days, but we will carry out our work thinking about the next 3,000 days, the next 5,000 days. We must think about the world that we want to have in 2030 and in 2050, and we must work for the future now. A world which, uh, or with sustainable economic growth in which no one with a job is poor. A world in which artificial intelligence and technology have freed us from uh, many onerous tasks and have contributed to the well-being of all citizens. A clean, ecological, uh, sustainable world, a planet with no sell by date. A world in which men and women earn the same salaries and enjoy the same rights and the same security. And a world, in short, in which wealth is properly distributed and in which no one is robbed of the opportunity to enjoy a decent standard of living. At last uh, year uh, inaugural session, the founder of Davos, the economist, the economist uh, Klaus Schwab, warned us that we are at a critical moment in the history of humankind and call uh, on us to ensure that globalization 4.0 is more human, more inclusive, and more sustainable. This is precisely the goal of the Spanish government.
the new Spanish government, to embrace all the opportunities opened by the fourth industrial revolution in order to build a fairer society in a more sustainable world with multilateral governance. Thank you very much for your attention. Mr. President, um, Europe there's growing fragmentation on the political side, there's growing polarization. Um, and um, how, how do you, uh, now that you've, you know, you've gotten your government together um, and uh, you got your coalition together, you're thinking about the future, how do you think that Europe could deal with this issue of fragmentation and polarization? After all, how can we gather around the values that are common, which many of which you mentioned uh, a moment ago? Well, of course, we have uh, many challenges ahead of us, the European Union, but I'm uh, quite optimistic. The outcome of the uh, electoral results uh, last May, uh, last year, I think was uh, very positive for the European Union, uh, for those political forces that we believe that the um, way out and the solutions for many challenges that we have in our societies needs a stronger Europe. Uh, the center-right liberals and also social democrats and uh, also with the participation of the green parties we reach a clear majority in the parliament in order to uh, pass uh, many laws that we need in our in our countries. So I'm quite optimistic about uh, this new term of uh, the new commission. Secondly, I think that well we have uh, cleaned some doubts and some, uh, uh, I would say, uh, difficulties uh, uh, last year with the, uh, with the Brexit. I think that uh, uh, after the UK elections, uh, we are facing a new, um, a new kind of negotiations with the UK. I'm looking forward to uh, collaborating with the, the UK government. I think that we can reach as soon as possible, a, a very positive agreement for the European Union and also for the UK. I think it's in the interest of both sides to reach that uh, positive and uh, constructive uh, agreement with uh, the, the, the better relation or the best relation that we can uh, reach uh, in this new situation. And, and thirdly, uh, all these five uh, transformations that I uh, mentioned as uh, uh, the, the main goals of the new Spanish government are completely aligned with the strategy uh, as stated by the uh, new president of the commission, uh, Ursula van der Leyen, uh, before the European Parliament. Uh, of course, always, my dear friend, the problem is how you back all those policies with uh, the, uh, uh, the resources. And this is the big debate that we will have in Europe. How are we going to agree in a new financial uh, uh, let's say, pluriannual um, uh, plan for the next years. But I'm uh, quite optimistic about the political support of the European values and, of course, the, the new commission that I, I think is, uh, you know, very with, with, the, with, the, with the enough strength in order to uh, reach those uh, challenges. Of course, from our side, from the Spanish government, we are going to, to be very constructive and very, you know, supportive of this new uh, term. Uh, Mr. President, um, Latin America, Ibero-America, as it's sometimes called. Typically, we think of Spain as the bridge, Europe to Latin America. But today, Latin America seems to be uh, the focus of discontent, you know, and uh, flare-ups. Uh, uh, now, how uh, do you believe uh, that this discontent, this frustration, especially by the, by youth, mm -hmm. can be addressed. Uh, obviously, what do you think Europe could do about it? And uh, last but not least, of course, uh, Spain, please. Well, it's, it's true. I mean, Angel, you, you come from Mexico, you know quite well, much better than, uh, than me, you know, the situation and the reality of Latin America. Latin America is not a, a compact and homogeneous uh, area. Uh, you have uh, many countries with uh, uh, diversity of language, culture, etc. I, I think that um, 
from our side, from the European Union side, and especially from, this, from the Spanish side, it's very important to strengthen uh, uh, the integration process in, in the region. I think that the, the lack of integration in Latin America is something that is uh, working against their interest. So, for instance, when I had the opportunity to meet uh, most of the leaders of Latin America, they complain a lot about uh, the migration uh, crisis because of Venezuela, because of Nicaragua, and because of, well, the uh, climate uh, change uh, refugees that, of course, in Central America, they're suffering, especially in, in, uh, in, uh, in Honduras, no, for instance, no, to put an example. Uh, I think that is crucial for uh, Latin America to strengthen their uh, regional integration process. Mm -hmm. We have seen uh, some interesting cases, for instance, in the uh, alliance in the Pacific. Uh, I'm looking forward to strengthening that collaboration also with Mercosur. You know that we uh, reached uh, finally last year an agreement between the European Union and the Mercosur, and we are now about to uh, ratificate this uh, uh, trade agreement in the, in the national parliament. Of course, uh, that uh, trade agreement with Mexico, with Chile, uh, with uh, Central America, and of course this strategic uh, discussion with Cuba that we are about to, uh, to negotiate uh, as the European Union. I think that uh, they have to put more focus on this regional integration process. And of course, uh, in, 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 on our side, I think it's very important, it's, it's crucial to have this Latin American perspective from the European Union side. It's a pity that, for instance, uh, the, uh, the only space of multilateralism that we have from the, Ibera, uh, from the Latin American side and the European side is this Ibero-American summit that this year is going to be uh, gathered in Andorra, no? uh, uh, very close uh, from here. Um, I think that we need in this new term for the uh, European Commission uh, to boost uh, this collaboration, for instance, with this uh, meeting of the CELAC. That would be an extraordinary idea, an initiative of the new Commission uh, for the years to come. Mr. President, uh, in your speech about Spain, you mentioned um, inclusion mm -hmm. and you mentioned reforms. Is there something about Latin America that maybe they could share about this? I, I, was, I was speaking uh, with, with uh, President Duque from Colombia and President uh, Lenin from Ecuador. And, and of course, to have a, a, a redistribution, you need to have a, a strong fiscal systems. And one of the challenges that uh, uh, Latin American governments are facing nowadays is how they strengthen their fiscal system in order to have uh, uh, policies that redistribute that richness uh, among uh, the people. Uh, Mr. President, last but not least, Spain. Now, you just formed your government, you just announced your, your government uh, plans, it was validated by the parliament. So you now have a clear mandate ahead, but you're in the midst of a global slowdown with trade tensions as high as they have ever been and with an average tariff for trade as high as it's been in a long, long time and with growing inequalities across the board. So it's a tough environment in which you're going to have to deliver. And on top of that, of course, you have a, 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 very, a very clear social agenda and climate, 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 Absolutely. As, as you have said. So could you um, uh, tell us a little bit of the secret of how you mix them all? Well, I think that uh, is, um, my, in my opinion, our goals, our main goals, uh, of course, is to defend the welfare state, of course, is uh, to provide social inclusion, uh, you know, Angel, for instance, in, in our country is something, you know, that for me is very negative. I mean, it's, it's a negative uh, impression, but it's, it's, it's the truth. We have 2.2 million kids in poverty. So we need to strengthen these uh, uh, inclusion policies in order to give opportunities, especially for the youth. Uh, as you mentioned in many uh, reports of the OECD, uh, the inequality, especially in our country, in my country, in Spain, uh, is suffered by the youth. 
And it is because we design a welfare state that is more, much more focused on the elderly than in, on the youth. And it's not a, a problem of you know, uh, confronting one uh, generation to the other, but to uh, reinvent and to redesign most of these uh, social policies in order to be much more not only uh, efficient, but also uh, 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 positive. No? Secondly, I'm, I, I think that for Spain it's crucial to lead digitalization, to lead uh, transitional uh, or the ecological transition. I think that we can create a lot of new opportunities, not only for enterprises, but also job creation. Um, of course, in the end, not only for big companies, but also for governments, it's crucial to have planification, to see you know, your work not only uh, on a week by week basis, but you know, four years, eight years, 12 years. This is something I lack uh, not only in the public debate in Spain, but also everywhere. You know, politicians, uh, governments, uh, we need to think about our countries and our continents, in, for instance, uh, the European Union, uh, in the midterm. What we want to be and how we provide ourselves with the instruments and the tools to deliver it. And I see the European Union and Spain leading the ecological transition, leading an industry that is respectful with uh, the planet, leading uh, the social inclusion, and leading, of course, a new era of digitalization. Digitalization is also a, a, a very interesting debate about property, rights, freedoms, and uh, when you see what is happening in China or in the you know, or in United States, I see that for us as Europeans, this can represent a huge opportunity, uh, not only for economic growth, not only for uh, labor opportunities, but also uh, to create much more uh, democratic societies in the world, which I think is uh, also very important for all of us. Uh, Mr. President, thank you so much for the time for the opportunity um, and uh, let me ask uh, our very numerous public today to express their appreciation and give you a send off with the, the best of luck <laughs> thank you for very much. your new mandate thank you very much